And we're live. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Tatiana Show. I'm really happy to be here today. I've got Josh, of course, joining me and my good friend, Julia Taransky. Hey, Julia, how's it going? Hey, I'm going well. How is it going with you, Josh? What's going on, guys? Oh, good. Yeah, um, working like crazy, as usual. Uh, exciting stuff in this whole arena. You know, when is Bitcoin and the whole crypto world not exciting? I mean, it's just it's just a constant drama. And, I mean, really, sometimes I think it's like watching some sort of amazing film that never ends, and there's just always another plot twist. It's just sensational for the popcorn time. Um, is there popcorn time? I don't pay attention to the things that induce popcorn. No, I mean popcorn. not popcorn time, the, but just uh, there's just it makes me, I, you know, the, there's always some drama, and you can really just get some popcorn out and start watching it unfold. Wait, it's what's amazing. the latest drama? I don't know what it is. Oh, I don't know. The whole blockchain size debate is, you know, getting old, but um, there's just always something happening, and and uh, it's it's amazing, you know. And then the, the, there was the whole Silk Road, and I mean, it's just. It's such an adventure, it really is, and um, you know, it's, it's it's an exciting time to be alive and witness this whole thing unfold. This whole thing we like to call decentralization of money or the separation of money and state and stuff like that. It's quite it's an interesting time to be alive. Mm, okay, Julia, you don't want to talk about Bitcoin, but uh, I know you from the Bitcoin space, <laughs> and I guess we know each other from some Liberty stuff as well. I don't even remember when we met. Oh, I remember when we met. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let's not talk about that. Well, moving right along. <laughs> um, oh my point. God, I no. want to know now. I want to know now. What is? <laughs> well, in 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 keeping with drama, we'll just leave it at that and say it was a it was a silly meeting, but it was resulted in a in a nice friendship. Yeah, so. it did. surprisingly, yeah. Um. Yeah, so I wrote an article recently on this whole Bitcoin issue, and it went to top of Reddit, well, Bitcoin Reddit, and people either really resonated with it, really resonated, or hated me. <laughs> so, but that's okay. Was that um, your Gavin post? Pardon? Was that the epic Gavin rant? Oh, yeah, it wasn't a rant. It was a highly calculated, I told you so, because it did reference my original concerns and how they mostly came true. And one of them was Gavin. And Hearn wasn't included in that, um, in the original article, but I had been talking about him publicly. So I, I talked about Hearn as well. So the funny thing is, everyone's messaging me and standing up for Gavin. No one said anything in defense of Hearn because Hearn rage quit, which, you know, I, I, again, proved that he wasn't invested uh, for the right reasons. And But nobody could say anything but Hearn, but Gavin's still in it. So, like, you, we, we have to defend our um, Messiah. We have to defend Gavin. So that Wait. was really interesting for me. So can you tell me what the gist is of the article? Because you never send me any of your materials, so I don't know what's in it. What happened? Tell and also maybe some of the other listeners haven't haven't read yeah, it. Yeah. Um. So it video, it's not it? up anymore. It it's not up anymore. Actually, I got a lot of hits on it, and but I, I feel like it was a very topical thing, and um I don't want to keep up negative attitudes, so I put it out there when everything was super negative. I got the opinion out. I I think I knocked Gavin down a few notches, uh, just pointing out a pointing out character flaws and the way that he's been, um, I guess, driving the peg between the community and the core team and generally between a Bitcoin and uh, people's high spirits. And I've taken it out since then, and I'll probably I'll republish it again in the future. But right now, I kind of want people to start to recover from all the negativity, so I don't see like. I don't know, that's just what I, I dropped the grenade and then took it out. So, uh, the gist of the article. Um, Tatian, did you see my video about how Bitcoin's not a honey badger? Did you ever see that one? Um, a long time ago, so yeah, you know, people can check it out on uh, bravetheworld.com, right? Yeah. Is that the, yeah, no, yeah. That's not your site. Is it Brave the World or is it Julia Taransky? No, it's bravetheworld.com. Julia okay, cool. my art up Okay, um, cool. So, I, I just, I go through my... Bitcoin is on a honey badger 
script and I point out the things I was correct about and I reference why and a lot of it is because of this current drama and I criticize Gavin, I criticize, and people took it so personally because I, I call it Gavin but it was much more than that. I talked about uh, classic, I, I talked about how democracy in Bitcoin is frankly retarded and I talked about how Reddit and the regular Bitcoin user should not feel like they have a say about very specific technical decision making because they don't understand and to think that you do understand even people like Brian Armstrong who run uh, Coinbase he keeps saying things that are just blatantly untrue or wrong or idiotic thinking that people should take him seriously and to the regular person maybe like oh yeah Brian he owns you know this big Bitcoin exchange blah 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 but that doesn't make him credible in terms of technical decisions we have to look at technical people and but you'd be guessing that he would he would be getting you know some very technical input from from his people um, so to decide you know on, on what what options are best. He uh, Brian Armstrong had a meeting with one of the core developers, in which the core developer literally told Brian that he does not know what he's talking about because he was so off base on the technicals. So that's just like I don't want to get into like names and stuff, but and the the develop the developer got a little bit like a little bit of a lecture from uh, the people he works with because they're like, oh, you can't do that. You got to be a little nicer. Like he's like, no, I'm not gonna stand by while a guy thinks that he knows something when he doesn't know. So that's a that's an interesting you know um, uh, line to draw because where you know in terms of a free software and open source platform a, a place that's evolving with many different um, cultures and and opinions about a certain direction that we take this amazing native currency to the internet. Um, if if someone's not technical, like I mean uh, you know I run an exchange with my brother uh, between Bitcoin and gold, and um, you know, I, my level of understanding is quite good, but of course I wouldn't be able to be anywhere near um, a, a core developer. But does that mean, you know, I, I don't have an opinion, or, or Brian, or someone else doesn't have an opinion, or, or anyone, even just a user? Well, you can have an opinion, but it shouldn't matter in terms of what direction to go um, for making hard forks or soft forks or changing the protocol. Because, first of all, I mean, you can talk about incentives and bias, right? People from companies, depending on what the company does, are going to want certain changes that may not be possible or beneficial or may break Bitcoin. You know, the miners may want one thing, the users may want another thing, uh, some of the companies may want something else. The people have this kind of naive outlook that oh, Bitcoin is totally decentralized and anarchistic and it's not actually that true and in terms of governance uh, it's definitely not anarchistic right now. Um, it's more of, it's even hard to put a label on it because no one has, you know, complete authority and the misunderstanding is like let's say let's say the core core devs the misunderstanding is these guys are sitting around saying oh yeah i'd like this change i'm going to i'm going let's do it let's work on it yeah yeah joseph i agree with you that's not true these guys everybody on the core team and i've met almost all of them and have like i'm not like friends with them but like i've met them and i've talked to them and i've watched yeah. this evolution of their governance, they they completely disagree on so many things, yeah. and that's really good because there's always a dialogue and they're always challenging each other. And um, mm. even uh, you you can look at uh, uh, GitHub and see like their feedback, and they're not yeah. there's some unified conspiratorial vision for Bitcoin that's coming from them. In fact, they have reached consensus several times, and then one of the people that wasn't happened to be there broke that consensus just by saying, no, I don't agree. And they're like, all right, let's rethink this. So yeah. Reddit puts forth this idea that they're like sitting there trying to make Bitcoin like a certain way. When in fact, actually, 
it was Gavin and Hearn who were doing that. And thank God Hearn rage quit because he was a horrible poison to this community. He he was a complete statist. He's been trying to get backdoors and censorship, um, uh, like censorship within Bitcoin, within mining, voting within mining. He did not have, his vision was not anywhere close to most of the people who like Bitcoin for what it is now. So I'm really glad that his rage quit is mostly celebrated. Now we need to recognize that Gavin isn't like doesn't have the cleanest hands, and I think he has alternate motives. And I'm not going to go into that because it's hearsay, right? But I can have an opinion. Um, but yeah, but people when it comes to, to government, like, like um, we can either choose like this like, sort of dialogue between one core group, or there's the second level that people talk about of allowing multiple core implementations or multiple reference clients, meaning the core protocol, whoever runs as many um, of this core protocol, uh, the chain starts following that core protocol. So uh, one, one for the listeners that don't really know, there's this one side which is Bitcoin Core, then there's other implementations like Bitcoin Classic and Bitcoin Unlimited and there's a few others, but yeah, they're, um, they're all very... Sorry. But there'll be, there'll be more, I'm sure. Yeah, and, and so having that second layer where people can go, okay, here's my other vote, <laughs> is that I'm, I can vote to download and use that, and if more people like that implementation, then it'll hard fork onto that and, and move forward. So, but yeah. I and think that, that the hard fork it, side is scary, right? See, that's, that's the scariest thing. This is exactly what uh, most of the people that... I know in Bitcoin that are working in Bitcoin were really scared of, you know, f they're f them forking the code and people stupidly supporting the code because they don't understand the implications of that code. And one thing, I mean, sure, that's democracy, that's real consumer power, but just because the majority of the people can afford to understand and want to shop at Walmart doesn't mean Walmart is the best store in the world, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's very short-sighted, and democracy has failed people again and again and again simply for this reason of not having enough information. You know, if, if I can't, I mean, we keep voting for crappy presidents, right? We keep voting for crap people because they're packaged and sold in a dishonest way, and so have a lot of but these protocols. But there is a difference because, you know, in terms of voting for people in government, there's no you you're forced to use that that outcome. Whereas with Bitcoin, you're not really forced to. So of even course, though you can if it's opt out of Bitcoin, voting, you don't have to use Bitcoin if you don't like the protocol. But that's yeah, or change for protocol. Me, that would suck. That would suck. That's not what I signed up yeah. for. And yeah. one, I mean, one point. I don't want to like keep going on about this as well. But like, it's it's a good conversation and it's a long one. But I really want to point out one main thing that people forget. When you fork the code, you are violating the original contract that people uh, signed up for when they started to use Bitcoin. Okay, so let's there's like let's take um, Mercedes Popesco for example. He he's one of the earliest uh, Bitcoiners, and uh, he he runs an exchange and. He does not support any changes to the protocol. He signed up to Bitcoin, and this social contract is to use Bitcoin as Bitcoin was intended by Satoshi, like as it was launched. So changing the code and forking it is a is a direct violation on his uh, social contract. So that's an interesting thing to think about. Obviously, with the problems at hand, things may need to be changed, but hard fork, soft fork, like those are huge decisions, and things can be built on top of the protocol instead of being inherently changed that may resolve a lot of the issues we think that we need a hard fork for. Yeah. But, um, oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Did you have something to say? No, I'm just oh. sitting, listening, talking. Yeah, like um, I think you know the thing is that we have this option now to, like you said, make Bitcoin this settlement layer where things happen and you build on top of that and you build faster networks and ones that are more reliable with zero confirmation and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and then there are the the camp that want everything on the chain on, um, so that they want to grow the blockchain. Yeah. And and so. And, and I mean, Satoshi did have this original idea of having not really a 
a block limit as such, but that incentives and game theory would would regulate this. And then there was some spam problems, and so they put this block limit in. But it was pretty arbitrary. What would you say to that argument that it was arbitrary? And so original Satoshi's original vision was to have everything to have a on the blockchain. Scale, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, no, I don't disagree with that, but I think Satoshi also couldn't foresee some of the other problems like the mining centralization because of ASEX, right? And that creates problems. And um, no one, the thing is, no one is arguing against scaling Bitcoin. Everybody wants Bitcoin to scale. And keep in mind, most of the core developers who are in early and have lots of Bitcoin and would love Bitcoins to scale and go big and be, um, have be accessed by the general population. But they're not, they're not fully motivated by money. Um, and this was one thing I pointed out in my article. If these guys were had incredible bias and were bad guys, like they were just, yeah, increase block size, cool. And it would work for a while probably, and it, Bitcoin would probably go up and everyone would be happy. And then we'd have detrimental consequences due to that. Probably Bitcoin was centralized like a mofo, like really fast, and other other probably unforeseen problems. And instead, they're being very careful. They're not being PC. They're not buckling to social pressure and harassment. They're really thinking this through and trying to be incredibly careful when touching the protocol. And I think people need to respect that. Like these guys put so much time and effort, and you know that's money. Time is money. Um, into working on this stuff, they don't want to have this thing just collapse or become something completely unrecognizable overnight, right? And not no one, everyone wants Bitcoin to scale, but the problem is like it might not be that easy, and it might not be um, might not be able to scale it in a direct manner or at all, and that's really hard to reconcile and come to terms with, but. Because like, I would say that it doesn't matter, like, you know, that's the whole thing is um, it doesn't matter what happens because Bitcoin's, uh, you know, general fiat can't compete, credit cards can't really compete with the value proposition that Bitcoin brings, especially to a philosophical, um, on a philosophical front where you think, okay, a stateless cash, but, or a borderless money, but where it can run into issues is if other currencies, cryptos, start moving forward in a better um, design adding some of the functionality that you know dash and stuff like that yeah. they're really putting some interesting uh, technology in whereas uh, Bitcoin could be frozen fear of developing further um, See, I frozen think I think in theory sure of course something better but I think it's incredibly far-fetched at this point Bitcoin became big uh, Oh, due to perfect timing, a lot of luck, a lot of uh, s philosophical support and hype and determination by several individuals. Um, it, it became big from a community. It grew from you know, the seeds of discontent for the current uh, state of things. Those were incredibly fertile grounds and they were necessary for Bitcoin to get to where it is. Uh, and then there were other steps that were vital, you know, having the investments and the companies and the entrepreneurs come in and now the artists and uh, the, the community in its entirety. I highly doubt that something like Dash, even if it's better, let's say Dash is better. Let's just use get Dash and say it's better. It's a better protocol. It just works. It's just it's not going to succeed unless Bitcoin succeeds. It's not. If Bitcoin fails or doesn't... Um, and I don't know what fails means. Like for me, I know what it means. I don't know what Bitcoin failing means for you or someone else. But let's say Bitcoin, people stop using Bitcoin. Like nobody's using it anymore. No cryptocurrency is going to catch up or stand a chance. All the crypto is going to go down, 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 down. And if one does end up uh, persevering, it's going to be years and years and years and years. It's yeah. You need the momentum. You need that perfect timing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Dash and other uh, cryptos. You need to support Bitcoin because if Bitcoin fails, you're done. Mm, that's what do y'all think? Yeah, about I, I love Except Tatiana Coin. Tatiana Coin will rule. Yeah. Rule, <laughs> always rule. 
<laughs> well, there's other artists coming with their coins, so we'll we'll worry about that later. Um, I wanted to say uh, a couple things. So, did you guys read this article? I never hang out on Reddit. I know everybody goes on Reddit because that's where all the cool I things go. But I don't go to Reddit. It seems like a horrible place. It is a horrible place. Um, yeah, like with mean people all the time. But um, you know, I'm working on this Vermont project, and we've been thinking about the white paper and about governance. And there was this uh, guy, I guess, in China, and the and it was a very successful article. It had like 350 upvotes or something, which I guess is good. Or no, 312. Yeah. And it says, China Dispatch 11, summary selected excerpts from Jihan Wu's recent essay on the state and structure of the Bitcoin ecosystem. Have you guys read this at all? I have not read it. I, I think no, it's no. really, really great. I, I recommend that our readers check it out. Um, you know, it's been a week and it's been a really busy week since I started reading it. But that being said, it was um, basically focusing on how the internal structure of Bitcoin is favorable to everybody except for the users. Like in terms of the ability for the users almost like you know you've got the three branches of government in the United States right you got the executive you got the other guys you got the other guys whatever um so in this case you've got the developers on one side then you've got the miners and then you've got the users and it was basically talking about how the users how are the least organized therefore their needs are the least likely to be met whereas the developers have their needs met the miners they have a concentrated amount of power um i would recommend it i thought it was really cool and um, and I guess the question is is you know how how demo how how good is democracy in this case and uh, where do you need to kind of lean on um, professional opinion versus just speculative opinion? So I don't know. I, yeah. I would just recommend if checking out the article. See what he defines as needs. It was it was a cool article. I. I I haven't read it recently enough um, in order yeah, to like you know re regurgitate it, but um, it's up there. And uh, Richard, who's helping us with this broadcast on Liberty.me and Let's Talk Bitcoin um, and a whole bunch of other places, he can post it into the comments section so cool. other people can check it out. Um, what do you all think about this Ethereum thing? Is Ethereum going to destroy Bitcoin? Is it the chosen one? I have a friend that tells me every day that it's the chosen one, and I'm like, you need to stop saying that. I have a bunch of Ethereum friends. Oh, man, it's always we always fight. Like It's always friendly, of course, but uh, okay, Sarah, Sarah, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. Uh, I think Ethereum has way worse uh, problems than Bitcoin. So why do you think that? Because I know... <laughs> I... I know the struggle that they've had with you know governance issues <laughs> oh, from day one I've heard it from every single person ever involved in the project uh, personally I've heard all sides of it and it's just so ironic because system designed to not need governance or designed to um, work on human incentives for this like, perfected system that doesn't need arbiters right but it, the the failures, its failures have solely been social, and uh, <laughs> it's really sad because the main guy who started it is, you know, he doesn't, he's not experienced enough to know who has good intentions and who has bad intentions. And I think you're talking about Vitalik. Yeah, um, and I think that's been a, the downfall of a lot. Of the, like that's been the the cause of a lot of the setbacks, but as a, as a like just the technology and the system, I think it's to be seen, right? We don't know. A lot of people say that it has very very severe uh, technical problems, and that it claims to solve um, solve things that it actually hasn't solved. But then there's my ether heads who are just so excited and I don't know I, I don't have enough technical <laughs> savvy heads. yeah I don't have enough technical savvy to make a concrete judgment about it uh, so all I can do is just look forward to seeing what happens I don't have anything against Ethereum I think this is really such a fascinating thing of of having these decentralized huge networks of people trying to come up with a decision where you need to kind of get like 75 percent. It's a lot of people. It's a very very hard call. And some people say like voting is something that uh, you know humans have used for a very very long time um, in groups to make a decision. And um, and some people uh, don't like that because it's saying that um, you know 
that's the 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 mass bullying the minority but some people think well you get crowd, wisdom through the crowd and so you know a lot of people would argue that uh, if that was the case you'd get the best singers in the world winning these singing competitions but usually people vote for you know other aspects like if the uh, sure. on, on the singing popularity and maybe the woman's father died and has a sub story behind and it and everyone votes for it. Which is a problem we haven't solved yet. How do we have one person equals one vote? How? Yeah. Yeah, well that too. That too, right. right. So Although, um, know, so then yeah, sorry. No, I'm I'm just I'm kind of like encouraged though, if you think about it. I mean it's pretty miserable. It could be a little bit grueling. It could be, you know, the ups and downs of this industry, but it's pretty awesome that people have not been so discouraged that they continue to strive for something better. So even if Ethereum or Bitcoin or any of these things fail, which you know I don't believe that they will. Obviously, I wouldn't be singing songs about it, and otherwise I'll be pretty embarrassing. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I think that it's really cool that people are trying to use their intellect in order to bring about a change, and that people are not willing, even under the the boot of the state, and you know, with with the way that things are in the world right now, um, people are still trying. You know, they haven't been completely beaten into submission, and um, there's some beauty to the vibrance and to the life that's being brought into um, this tech of all things, technology, right? I don't know. I, I've never really connected with tech, and yet here I am. And well, I think you know we're we're still working on it, right? And plus, think about all the projects that we don't know about, right. the things yeah. that are in stealth. To be selfish, I really hope that the Silk Road appeal goes through, because I think that'll boost a lot of morale. I really do. Absolutely. The Silk Road will always be tied to Bitcoin, and anything positive with Silk Road, I think, will really uh, just provide a nice warm blanket of encouragement to everyone frustrated. Well, you know what I find so infuriating is people in Bitcoin that use Silk Road like a dirty word. And I get why they do that, but I still think it's such a wussy way out. Yeah, and these I are mean, the people who bought pot off of Silk Road. Yeah, okay. and last I checked, everybody that I know in Bitcoin and in the world <laughs> has occasionally dabbled in drugs. Yeah. I mean, give me a freaking break. Get over it. And also, like, Bitcoin would not have had utility. It would not have had the yeah. meteoric exactly. rise that it experienced. Exactly, and that's the luck I'm talking about, right? Like, how vital was Silk Road to popularization mm. of Bitcoin? That's when I that's when yeah. I heard about it. That's when most people heard about Bitcoin. That's the most use Good case. Good old Chuck Schumer. <laughs> yeah, uh, but you know it was underground for a long time, and people were using Bitcoin solely for the purchase of. Yeah. It was the first killer app. It was the true yeah. first killer app, for Bitcoin, and and, and um, you know people forget that. Yeah, they really do. And this is like this goes back to my argument about um, altcoins. Like that's just it's very hard to create those circumstances again. It's it's. It's like evolution, right? Like, there's only a few other planets mathematically that could possibly have life in their entire, uh, in the, the entirety of space. Because you need the perfect, like, not perfect, but you need a lot of luck, a lot of uh, conditions that are just right, and it's very rare for it to happen more than a few times, right? So no, the timing was grants, perfect. Yeah. Well, who grants luck, right? And does that mean that the the fates or whoever it is, right, who's giving out God. this luck, right? Well, maybe not the crypto god, maybe regular god, maybe any god, whatever, or or you know, just regular god. god. So why why are people lucky? And does that mean that we're gonna get Ross out? Because hey, I mean, day. goddess, we have to say goddess. Today. I am I'm, I'm with that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um. Speaking of uh, speaking of Ross, in case people are not aware, because uh, Julia and I are really passionate about this, Josh is too. Um, but Ross actually made a really cool drawing, and while he was in prison, uh, called the trial I saw. And if people oh, yeah. go to freeross.org, they just completely redid the site, and on the top left corner, it's like, oh, play the game or something like that. And as you donate, you can donate just a dollar, and obviously, hopefully, more. But whatever, and anybody could do it. If you're poor, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> um, so basically, you know, you you reveal the picture, and I think that that's so cool that um, art has found its way to express this really tragic situation. And um, I don't know, like 
I, what I really admire about Julia, which I didn't know about when I just became her friend, was what an amazing artist she is. She's fantastic. I looked at her art. I was like, no, come on. <laughs> it's really, really great. You all know about her writing and her videos and stuff. Go and look at her, her artwork. It's really beautiful, and I hope that you find more time to do that. Do you think that you're well, going to do any crypto art, or well. is it just going to be regular? I did. I can actually show you some. Oh, cool. Very cool. So this is a project I did with a guy named Max Millenbrook. And he oh, you told me about this. This is great. CLRs. So he's been doing things like this. I'll show you his original works. So he does this physical Bitcoin. Can we do a Kalara for Ross's artwork? Uh, Max and I have talked about it. Oh, okay. Well, we'll talk about that offline, and hopefully people can do that. Yeah. Um, so, all right. What did, what's uh, inside oh, that? Well, then he did a, a signature series where he gets artists to do a painting that's not necessarily Bitcoin-related, but can kind of echo uh, crypto or tech or something. So this is Ricky Allman's piece. Right, and it's in Very a physical cool. Bitcoin. And these ones you load yourself, and it's got a silver so, coin inside. So the gold and silver bugs kind of get a uh, get their fix as well. And oh, then fantastic! I did this one, and it actually I really stand by my kind of subject matter here. Um, For the so radio did, listeners, can you just give a quick uh, explanation of what you're holding up there? Yeah, so this is the Kilara signature series, and it's my painting inside a physical Bitcoin with a silver coin in the back, and you load it yourself with your own private and public key. And uh, it's echoing the Raft of Medusa, which was um, a, an old painting, <laughs> and it was very political in nature because it criticized the monarchy and the... Um, the people, the poor people, the discrimination against the poor at the time because it was a bunch of uh, workers and slaves left on a raft to die and, st and while the aristocrats sailed away to safety. So basically, oh, it's Bitcoin oh, in the murky waters and Bitcoin is represented by a bunch of different animals on a raft mm. and is it going to sink? Is it going to not sink? So it's actually very topical for what's happening right now. And I painted it. Th I painted this a few months ago too. So it's kind of in anticipation of more uh, fuckistry. So is it? <laughs> is that a? Um, is it a hologram that I see there? You, it's um, sort of slightly shifting as you're tilting right. it. No, it's not. It's just the light. But these ones do have okay. uh, holograms on the back. Wow. And where can, can people buy these? Yes, so you can go. You can find a, a link to buy them through my website, Brave the World, and uh, you'll see it. You'll see there's like a big. They're really beautiful, them. folks. Get yeah, do yourself no, a favor. They're really folks. nice. My yeah, they're collectible too. They're collectible, and they'll probably appreciate. And you know, it's beautiful work, and they're around a hundred bucks. And then his other ones are around seventy. And uh, his website is maxmillenbrook.me. I actually saw it as maxfield.me. Oh, yeah, sorry, maxfield.me, sorry. Okay, and incidentally, I also pasted these links into our chat, so they'll be um, they'll be in the show notes as well. Oh, perfect. Because I think that they're beautiful. They're really, really cool, and um, I don't know, I want one. So. Yeah, the, the, yeah want a lot of people too. collect them. They just, co they just get one of each or a few of each, and it's, uh, it's a good investment. It's the most beautiful investment you can make. Well, also, it's, you know, it's... Yeah, I guess that's it. No, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, do, you, you do a lot with um. Oh, I was gonna say it's a good price point. You know, a hundred bucks is yeah. you know the new fifty dollar gift. Now it's a hundred dollars, but don't yeah. worry, there's no inflation. Everybody, go back to sleep. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, um, I, you, uh, sorry. No, go ahead, Josh. I was just going to say, um, you know, Julie does a lot of um, uh, stuff with uh, women's issues and being w International Women's Day, of course, as you mentioned before. Um, you know, the, the old conversation always comes up about not enough women in Bitcoin and this sort of thing. And I always say, well, it's an open platform. It just seems to show the psyche of, of um, you know, what women and men are generally interested in. I don't know if, um, you know, I don't feel that we... Uh, as a community, put that many barriers. Of course, once there's a whole heap of men at a table, it's awkward for a woman. I understand that, um, but I don't think there's any sort of over-the-top thing that we are doing to 
dispromote women? I, or, um, or I think, deny? and I think it's a little bit of a myth. Obviously, there's more men in Bitcoin, but there's not that few women. And I think at the very start, especially uh, Michelle Sellen was talking about this the other day on Twitter, I think, and she was saying how. Uh, a lot of the women have been kind of like overshadowed, you know, they're, at the very beginning there was her and Bitcoin mom and like loads of girls into it, yeah. loads of girls. Uh, some of the story, like some of my personal friends were just like not vocal, they're women, they're totally into it. Mm. And it just feels like now with all the like the VC power, it's, um, you know, Silicon Valley is a little bit, there's a lot of men, the male entrepreneurs, all of that, young guys from the Ivy League school. So that area is already dominated by dudes, and then, then they're getting into Bitcoin too. So mm. to like say, like, it's very, you got to be careful when you say, like, oh, there's more men in Bitcoin, because a lot of the men came in a lot later, and they um, came from fields that, that were male dominated. So kind of like that, yeah. it had that effect. But yeah, I definitely don't deny there's more men generally in Bitcoin, but there isn't that few women. I don't think it's an issue, and I think women are becoming, you know, with every generation, women are becoming um, more and more interested in tech, and there's the Tor, like, so many Tor coders and programmers are women, and... Wow, yeah. Yeah, it could be, you know, it could be an issue of voice, it could be that they are just not as vocal and maybe they don't have the big egos at play where they need to be heard all the time about everything. Um, I don't know. It's not an issue to me. I think I, I have so many female friends in this space and they're my favorite and they're great and uh, no one is excluding them. I don't feel excluded. No. I think that that's actually inaccurate. Um, yeah. Sorry, I've been sitting here like trying to jump in but... Um, okay, I think that there are a lot of amazing women in Bitcoin, but I think that if you look at all of these exclusive events where people are inviting people, there if you look at them, there's literally no women being invited. There's two or three. You can't possibly tell me that there's only two or three smart women in all of the uh, the upper echelon of Bitcoin. It's ridiculous. So um, let's take, for example, um, the Necker Island thing, right? When that was an expensive ticket. What was this ten thousand dollars or something? Yeah. And the defense I heard is if women, if any bit women in Bitcoin want to pay ten thousand dollars to come be on the island, go ahead. But uh, initially, when they were doing the round of invites, nobody, nobody wanted to do that. I don't no, know. that's I unfortunately was privy to a whole bunch of. Uh, too much information about the Necker Island fiasco. Okay. The Necker Island fiasco is a perfect example of what I consider to be just not fair inclusion of women and other people, like people of color um, or anything. It's just, uh, I don't really want to, I didn't really want to get specific, but with that specific event, now that we're walking down this path, they were asking for recommendations for people to include in that and they were given a list of women and then they didn't include any women and then women started complaining and then they started adding a few token women and making up and backtracking. So that was the deal with that. Recently there was um, another uh, private invite event and it was the same exact thing where it was last I checked only two or three women had been invited, the rest of it was all men and then I knew of a woman who was asked to help out. What because, about, you know, the, that's what what about women the strippers are there they helping. invited? That, well, I'm just joking. I mean I, I don't have a problem with strippers, I do have a problem with mixing strippers oh, and business joking, events. I, um, I don't think that that's appropriate. Yeah. My question is were there women who are CEOs and VCs of Bitcoin companies, etc., who wanted to go and were willing to pay $10,000 and were told no. They were not invited, so isn't that part of the problem? I mean, not inviting, not uh, so being how, so they were. So how did they invite people? They Was it based on the recommendations in the lists or... It was based on the buddy system. Come on. I mean, like, you know, well, and, and that's knows. how business works, whatever, you invite people, whatever, but I, I just don't think, and they're entitled to do whatever they like. I don't really get too bent out of shape about these things because I don't care. I'm like, whatever, like, oh, big deal, everybody's being sexist, what else is new? Like, I think that there's other things to focus on that are more important, but I just, 
I, I have to draw the line at saying that there is that that doesn't occur because it definitely occurs. And then if you think about how if you go into a room full of Bitcoin dudes, this is not just because they have penises. I think it's because they're apsy and they don't know how to socialize. But yeah. it's just a measuring contest of I would. Of, who has the biggest Bitcoin? Uh, yeah, yeah. And you know, would, it's not a yeah, I would I'm going to participate in. Bitcoin issue. I would. I would agree that. I don't think this is a Bitcoin issue. I think this is a uh, Silicon Decide. Valley businessman boys club issue. Okay, fair enough. Right. I think because Bitcoin is extremely exclusive as like a. I mean, inclusive. I think women, can, since right. they manage the money for most households, should be more interested. Right. And um. And I, I think that. It's yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Julia. No, yeah, I, I I don't disagree with your premise. I just think like I've been to a bunch of conferences and stuff, and like women are definitely not excluded there, or um, you know, at any events. But really, what about the Miami event where they invited one woman to be a speaker out of all of the different speakers that they have? Miami is notorious for having this issue where they don't have women speakers. Yeah, um, who, but who organized that event? Uh, what's his name? Mo Levin. Mo. Yeah, but it's Mo. I mean, saying? but that doesn't mean that it should be like supported right, but, by yeah, the community. Uh, Bitcoin issue. That's a organizer issue who happens to be Mo. Like Mo, I, like, I, I feel like Mo is the kind of guy. Who pressure. Can... Yeah, Mo is obviously, you know, has some problems with women. But the point is, is and that look people. Look at the woman who spoke. Look at the woman who spoke at Miami. That's the woman they had speak. I think this is a Mo issue. That was two years ago, to be clear, because it wasn't this year's token no. woman. Um, <laughs> But my point is, is that the community should be saying, hey, I'm on this panel, but it's all dudes. And wait a second, this entire roster is all dudes. And to be fair, I don't think that people are aware of that. Just like white people are not aware when they're being perceived as racist by black people. Sometimes one side is two sensitive, the other side is two sensitive, somebody's being a dick. But the point is, is that unless you're on that other side, you don't necessarily even know to be looking for that. You know, and I think that yeah. maybe a little bit of awareness would be helpful for the male co for the men in the system and in general like this is another problem um about it's an american issue though like for instance in in europe in uh, bitcoin meetups i see plenty of women um we're not talking about conferences meetups, though. giving talks um well okay then conferences is a different thing cuz i think I you're putting with women that the, in in europe there's a bit of a different vibe in terms of this i think in america I, I still, like, I don't think it's a Bitcoin issue. I think it's a Silicon Valley VC CEO issue and it happens to be mostly men and they're used to doing business with those people and they're the high power big rollers who have the money and they make the calls and they invite who they want. And I, I don't think that it's sexist. I just think that's what they have been doing. It's what they're used to. And uh, I think... In fact, Bitcoin is challenging those um, uh, the, like the, those uh, habits. I think it's challenging those habits because they're like, oh, actually, wow, this woman has a company and it's uh, tech savvy and it's Bitcoin and wow, cool, I'm not used to this. I don't think there's any intended sexism. I, I think, in fact, Bitcoin oh my God. is much more for girls in that sense than not because if it is an issue, it's a Silicon Valley issue. Mm, I would say that I disagree with that as well. I don't think that, um, I think that there needs to be, for example, um, I know of some men that all got together with some VC thing and they've got like, you know, literally they're hiring like women off of Craigslist to like walk around naked and it's a private party, fine. But how is that encouraging to the rest of the community when the men that are attending this are basically acknowledging that this is okay by attending? Like, if these are business events, not and and I'm conflating different events um, in my analysis, so excuse that. But I just think that there should be more pressure, not to show favoritism well, to women or um, the VCs okay. and and like businesses that want to get VC business. I mean, I'm just saying. I know that this goes on, but to me, Bitcoin is supposed to be the great equalizer. The impetus for Bitcoin is to bring um, empowerment to everyone, not based on like their color or their sexual preference or whatever. It's supposed to be about empowering anybody who has a cell phone, right? Um, so I think that there should continue to be awareness about this. Another thing, you know, a lot of times women in Bitcoin uh, and in just in 
in general in business, but I guess it's less um, less approved of as it is in the Silicon Valley finance crowd. But you know, I have a girlfriend who's constantly going on these business meetings, and the guys are trying to take her out. She's a fake wedding ring. She has to, you know, really watch herself, and yeah. she can't figure out like how to get. And this is a strong, smart. I mean, this isn't a girl that comes off as like a floozy. I mean, yeah. she's really like professional. And every freaking meeting that she has, the guy's trying to take her home. Well, this guy's not going to change human nature. <laughs> I think that there needs to be pressure in in terms of not using business to exploit people sexually. I don't think that that's acceptable just I, because that's I, I human nature. That's I don't really approve of that. But, but it's not. It's, not it, it's in every in every culture. I mean, that's something that. Not in every you culture, know, but racism in, in, is in, in every, every culture, workplace. but that's not okay either, right? So, like, shouldn't people be trying to move past yeah, that type of thing? Yeah, but being attracted to someone and, be, and want to take them out isn't inherently bad. It is if that person is trying to make a business deal with you and they have made it clear to you on several occasions that they are not interested in dating you. Because then you're using your, yes, your clout yes, in order to pressure that's, somebody. That's an inherent problem of being a woman. Yeah, I mean, that's true. And there are some benefits to being a woman. You know, you can right. smile pretty and, you know, you get the door open for you and not even just the, the yeah. literal door, the figurative door. This is the fine line that women have to walk. Do I use my femininity to gain uh, status or favors in business or in that? I'm not saying sleeping around with men. I'm saying uh, charm and all of this kind of because men charm each other as well. And then yeah. you get run into the problem of, am I being too flirty? Do these guys just want to work with me so they can date me? Do, blah, blah, blah. Like, like, there's this misconception of women in the, biz, in the workforce being discriminated, being discriminated against because they're women, and men don't think they have the mental capacity to work with them. It's the opposite. Men want to work with you because they hope they're going to sleep with you later. And I don't know how you can change that. Because I don't know. I think, the, 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 I mean, there's a lot of generalizations there. You know, I, but we're I talking think it all general. comes down to... But you know that everyone's different. You know, there's there, some people would do that. Some people are sexist, and the, there's a whole barrage of people, different sorts of people in Bitcoin. Um, yeah, it's not a Bitcoin. And, and, issue. and in business. Oh, I want to say. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, know. I've seen it. Issue. I've seen it very often in this. I mean, whatever. I don't get too bent out of shape about it. But I think that if you don't put, you know. Yeah, this is an individual issue, right? It's a person to person, but we are pack animals, right? So people just go along with what everybody says. So if one guy brings like, you know, strippers to a business conference, the other guys are going to be like, "Yeah, boobs." And then all of a sudden it's a completely changed dynamic. Yeah. And then it, it just it just shouldn't be brought up. Like, to be honest, I would be like totally happy with strippers that are like that's just me. <laughs> yeah, but that's not at a business event. That is that is a personal time thing. That's not fair. Yeah. It's not respectful of other people's boundaries. You know, like but I've been to a strip club. I just don't know what you're talking about. I don't. Know. Oh my god, there's like so many of them. I don't. I, I'm not really interested in in starting some big Twitter war with people crybabying about this conversation. That was certainly yeah. not the impetus. I just, like, I'm just not info I'm just not, I don't know that that goes on. Like, I've only seen it at the after parties. Like, I've never seen it at, like, an actual business meeting or actual conference, except, like, booth girls, but... That's I mean, I, I, know, I know girls that have used their, their femininity and their charm to basically get whatever they want from a lot of guys too. So guys have to be careful of in that business? sort of relationship or dynamic in, in business. Yeah. Oh yeah, in business, definitely. Yeah. You know, but they've been I totally like taken the town. Do you think it always backfires, Josh, though? Well, you know, I mean, it, it comes on the situation, but I think it can backfire and it's yeah. never, uh, you know, it's like it's like when a, an investor invests and buys a whole heap of a new casino, it could it could backfire, it could go broke, but it could make a lot of money too. If you make a business deal with someone where you're using sex to try to, you know, um, yeah. break break a deal yeah. and then it doesn't go through, someone's going to get hurt or something's yeah. going to happen. But it's a bet and it's a part of the business relationship. It's it's always going to be there between men and women. I don't think you can, yeah. you can do anything and about it apart from, you know, say look, it's you know, definitely there's inequalities when, when you're having a, a very open public meeting about a public protocol, open source protocol, and only invite men, even though there's definitely leaders, women leaders, then of course someone needs to speak up. But I, but I think generally, um, you know, we all need to, uh, I think when we have too many generalizations,
questions about everything, it can get all a little bit just yeah, yeah. doesn't mean anything. And it's difficult anymore. to speak without them, right? I mean, that would take hours. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so are you writing something about women's issues that you were saying before the show? Um, you were... Sure. I mean, I think it, it could help with all of this because it's about the differences between men and women, the inherent biological, uh, um, evolutionary, psychological, hormonal differences between the two sexes. That will never go away. And no matter how hard we try to socially uh, curb them, they'll still be there. They're, you know, they're just there because we're animals at the end of the day. And people don't like to think about that because they feel out of control, like they don't feel like they have will uh, willpower, and <laughs> we kind of don't in a lot of cases. And that was my point. I think a lot of people act in a certain way without even realizing that they're doing something that could be perceived as really inappropriate or wrong. And it's definitely important to work on yourselves because we are animals, but we're logical animals with consciousness, and we can definitely, you know, keep evolving. But there's still those like very basic uh, human inherent instincts that are slightly different from each sex. And the more people acknowledge that, I think the better conversation will be between men and women because they'll be I, able, they'll understand each other better. I don't know. I feel like people can use that as an excuse. You know what I mean? Like, oh, men and women, they always, you know, it's okay. Just grab her ass. It's all right. You know what I mean? Like, well, no, how would it? No, no. It would never justify. Like, no. <laughs> no, it would never justify that. But um, just in, in the way in the way that men and women uh, learn and the way that their uh, brain is structured and the things that they the hierarchy of values that they have because of their human nature, I think that could really explain a lot of uh, things. And it and it certainly explains why there are less women in fields such as this. Uh, it's it's not necessarily sexism or women are stupid. There's very legitimate biological. Uh, hormonal reasons for it, and it all diverges after puberty, right? And even, but it starts in the womb. Sure, that that's a fair point. I mean, there's yeah. definitely differences. I guess it's just frustrating when people blame their own inability to evolve on. Oh, no. it's just men and women. You know, it's just always going to be that way. So, um, I don't know. I, uh, I think uh, that there's uh, there's some balance to be found on both sides. Hmm? Yeah, I had to laugh. Sorry. Huh? I re I just was wanted to add to what uh, um, what Tatiana was saying. Uh, I saw one of your videos where you you stated um, um, you know the great equalizer, and then you pulled out this shotgun for women. I I, I was uh, it was I liked it. I, <laughs> well, I that, that's just a very basic example. Men are typically bigger than women. Mm. Typically, have their muscles are literally bigger. That's the way that yeah. your blueprint is. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. it's like it, to deny that is to have uh, unisex Olympics, right? So no, I mean obviously yeah. men are stronger. Not yeah, all men. Yeah, women are the no. same. So let's let's put women against uh, men in football, and then say that it's sexist when nobody makes the team who's a female. <laughs> Yeah, right? That's yeah, why we separate exactly. the sexes for sports. Like it's just why do we we acknowledge that women men different men and women are different uh, physiologically when it comes to the Olympics and sports, but we don't acknowledge yeah. it when it comes to our brains. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah it is, well, yeah. do you think that? I don't know. I mean, I guess you you run the risk of being going down the rabbit hole of saying, so what are you saying, women are stupider, or whatever, I'm more stupid. Oh, the worst no, thing ever. No, and, and, and women are stupider. <laughs> I know, I know, I caught myself as it came out. put it plainly, there's a reason why the Bitcoin charity is run by a woman, okay? Mm -hmm. There's a reason why it's not a man, it's a woman, because it's a woman, and women are inclined to be more social, more maternal, uh, a little bit, a little bit on the more cautious side in their human nature. There's obviously exceptions. There's pow like powerful, ego, uh, super motivated women that make loads of money and build companies, of course. But generally speaking, uh, back in the tribal days, women had to get along with the other ladies so they could help each other out when they're raising the kids and men had to go out and compete and kill each other and animals so that they can provide for themselves and their genetic offspring and that's still in us and we've gone way beyond it in a lot of respects but at the end of the day women 
prioritize their choices in life still based on those very basic human instincts. But wow. I think that that points hey, um, out exactly why we need, um, you know, to have a balance in the Bitcoin space because there's different things brought to the table by everybody. I know? totally agree. I think women have a very unique perspective uh, in every field because we think differently and men have a different perspective and I think you could build, uh, whatever you're building could be improved when you have more uh, more perspectives and two men will have different perspectives but not as different as a female so it could be a huge value asset absolutely so guys I hate to be uh, wrapping things up but it is um, three minutes until the end of the show Julia has another thing we all have uh, busy lives but Julia we have this show airing on um, a few different networks we've got on Let's Talk Bitcoin, Liberty.me, on uh, LRN.FM and then IMP something, oh my god, I'm so horrible, IMP Nation. And um, <laughs> anyway, we have to have a, a magical phrase. So can you give us our magical phrase or word for the day for our LTB listeners? Um, don't lose hope, Bitcoin on. <laughs> okay, I like that. Don't lose hope, Bitcoin on. Um, all right, Julia, where Let's, can people find you? JuliaTaransky.com to see your awesome art, and then what's uh, BraveTheWorld.com, right? Yeah, BraveTheWorld.com, and you can find my YouTube channel, Twitter, and other the cool Bitcoin art I do uh, on there, and articles. I'll be releasing a new article today as well. So, Okay, yeah. awesome. Josh? Yeah, well, folks, if you want to, um, you know, trade into another absolutely fantastic asset, gold. I'm talking about um, 3,000 of years of historical asset-based money, true money, and Bitcoin, rare numbers, rare assets, work together really well. So if you want to trade the two, um, then go right ahead at Voltoro, and there's also a, um, a referral program now, so that's cool. Ooh. Excellent. Yeah. And uh, if people want to find me, TatianaMoroz.com and CryptoMediaHub.com if you need PR or advertising or anything in the Bitcoin space. And we will see you guys next week. I think we have a bonus episode this week on Thursday. So, um, I don't know, back, back at home, happy to be here. We'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching and peace out. Bye. Peace.